This podcast is being recorded and produced on Gadigal land. We pay our respects to the traditional custodians of this country and elders past, present. We extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Before we start, we'd like to stress that this episode contains conversations around weight loss, diet culture and eating disorders. I'm Brittany Saunders. And I'm All Right Hey, and this is High Scrollers, the podcast version of your favourite group chat. If it's trending, going viral or has you gripped, we're talking about it. Coming up on this episode... One TikTok account has got us thinking back to our party days and boy, do we have some wild stories to tell you. Also, there's been an infestation at Paris Fashion Week. And I'm itching to tell you a confession that I've never told anyone. (laughs) Literally. Plus, speaking of Fashion Week, Pamela Anderson is bearing it all at the events and we are so here for it. Yep. Exciting episode coming up for you. Deal me in, doll. Let's go. I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. I know. It's been a while, no, Joel. Like the, the long weekend's thrown us off. I know. And with daylight savings, I've got to say, even though the clock only changes an hour, I feel like it really fucks me up. It ruins my entire life. Like, my sleep schedule's wrong. I swear it's thrown me way off. My dogs are asking for dinner at the wrong time. <laughs> How do the dogs know? So, Sneaky and Peanut, they're my two dash hounds, by the way. They have dinner at 5 o'clock every day. Sneaky comes to me at about 4.45 and starts asking. Yeah. 5 o'clock came. He didn't ask. He came to me then at quarter to 6 to ask for dinner. And then I (laughs) said to him, I was like, suck shit. You don't know that it's the wrong time. (laughs) Poor dog. Isn't that cute? And then their dinner time changes. But, like, why why couldn't you just feed them at the the same time? But, like, daylight saving. Like, why couldn't you just feed them at 4.45? Well, I would, but they didn't come asking because they thought it was 3.45. Oh, okay. Do you know I'll, what I mean? You've confused me, to be honest. Well, like, whatever the time is anyway, the dogs get confused. Yeah. It's like the only thing that I don't like about October. <laughs> but, see, do you – I prefer the way it is now when, like, it's really light later in the day. Same. Like, I yeah. hate when it gets dark at 5 no. or 5, whatever. Me too. It was really nice, actually. On Monday, I went over to a friend's house and we were able to, like, sit on the back deck. Yes, and, and it's sunny. Talk- like Still seven like, o'clock. Exactly. Yeah. But also at the same time, I don't really get daylight savings. Like what's, why do we do it? Why did Queensland not do it? And AJ said it's got something to do with the farmers. <laughs> I've got <laughs> no clue. Apparently it's the far, yep. it's got something to do with farming. I don't know. Barking up the wrong tree here. Look, I've got just, no clue. Why don't we just make it half an hour in between and stay that way always? Oh, well, cause the farmers. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's my birthday month. Say happy birthday. Happy scrollers. birthday to you. I'm, I'm telling you now because... um, I'll How old are you turning this month? 29. Oh. Yeah, so one year till I'm 30. Yeah. It feels like yesterday we were celebrating like our 22nd literally, birthday. Literally. Time flies when you throw a clock. I know. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> it really does. Well, I'm putting it out there so that everyone can send me birthday presents because you've got a couple of weeks. My birthday's on the 23rd. Do you have a P.O. box? Um, no, but um, I'll just give you my home address. Okay, you're being generous. let's put it out on the internet. Do you remember when we used to have P.O. boxes back in the day yes. when we were doing YouTube videos? Yes. And if you would like to send me anything to my P.O. box, no, it's in the description no, down below. Don't. No. I mean, it was lovely. Yeah. I loved getting little presents. You but might like, have to set it up again. Set up a high scroller's <laughs> P.O. box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> send us. Good. Oh, oh, who's getting a message? I've got a text. Mute it. I've muted it. (laughs) (laughs) Muted it. (laughs) Anyway, big Libra energy. We're in Libra season, which is fun. What's Um, a Libra? Is that the scale? Yeah. What does that mean? Balance? um, Yeah, definitely the best star sign not being biased. You reckon? Yeah. What is it, a water sign? Oh, God, I don't know. I don't know I'm really not that into it, to be honest. I remember I tried to work out my birth chart once and it gave me a headache, so I gave up on that. But I'm um, very excited for all the presents. Actually, I have a present for you today. I've brought you a present. Okay. Um, it's in my bag because remember you were telling me you loved uh, Diet Right Cordial. Yes, I, well, I got do. the flavour that you love and I tried it and I don't like it. So okay. I'm giving you a oh, three-quarter you. full. Three-quarter thank full. Thank you so much. Um, it's your birthday month and you're giving me a present. <laughs> Diet Right Apple Strawberry Guava. That was the flavour you loved, isn't it? Um, I think it's my second favourite. So oh, you okay. got it wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was trash, so no wonder oh! it's not your favourite. I'll take it. Should I have a sip of it, like? Straight? Yeah. Yeah, you better. Okay. Here you go. There's a first for everything on this podcast. I'm going to take a sip of straight cordial. 
<laughs> Do you reckon people have bought this before and filled up a cup and had a big skull? Absolutely not. Oh. <laughs> That's potent. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> I wouldn't drink it if I was thirsty, though. Oh, good. Um, but thank you for that. I'll tell you what diet right reminds me of. Mm. Well, diets, obviously, but it reminds me of the keto days, <sighs> which you you are very familiar with. Not the keto days. <laughs> you know you know what? So many people still talk to me about, like, to this day, they'll just randomly, even on, like, when I do live streams is when it seems to come out, people will be like, remember when you did keto? You were a bit of a, didn't you have a keto account? I had a whole other oh. Instagram, which <laughs> was called All Right Way. You did! Which, which was all about my weight loss journey. And, uh, yeah, did keto. And... <laughs> It was. Didn't you do keto as well? Yeah, look, I tried it and AJ tried it. I, I feel like keto is obviously always trending because there is such a big community around keto. And if you don't know what keto is, for those of you at home, it's a ketogenic diet, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a high fat diet. Apparently <laughs> it burns fat faster and you lose weight faster or something yeah. like that. <laughs> and anyway, I feel like when you were doing it and Jazz was doing it and you were doing whatever the program was. Yeah. I remember I was looking into it and my mum really got into it. Shaz. Shaz I really again, <laughs> Shaz on the Every Shaz episode. On the yeah, I did jump on it as well. Never like spoke about it on social media, but I went out and bought all the fat foods, high fat. <laughs> I was eating spoonfuls of full cream and <laughs> bacon. <laughs> Meat with cheese on it. I mean, it's delicious, yeah. but I don't know how I feel about it now. It's not for me. It wasn't sustainable. Yeah. Look, it taught me a lot of lessons. Yeah. I don't regret doing keto. Do I regret, like, having that weight loss page? Or Because people have to realise this was only 2019. It's this not even that, that long, long ago. ago. Yeah. Um, do I regret in a way, promoting keto to my audience. Absolutely. I made the separate Instagram because I was like, this won't be for everyone. So yep. come and follow me if you actually want to like hear about this. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, if I could go back and turn back the clock, like I'm glad I did keto because it taught me so many lessons because the thing is like, I, I lost a lot of weight on it. I lost like over 30 kilos mm -hmm. and the whole re thing was back then, like I was so unhappy with my life and my body. Mm -hmm. And I thought that like, if I lost weight, I'd be happy and I'd feel beautiful and blah, 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 blah. And then I lost all the weight and I still felt depressed and mm -hmm. I still looked in the mirror and I still hated what was looking back at me. And no matter how much like weight I lost, cause I was tiny and I was like, is it ever going to be enough? And mm -hmm. then in turn came my like body positivity um, or even body neutrality or neutral mm -hmm. ideology of like just looking at my body and just being like, this is my body, mm -hmm. full stop. There's actually no, I'm not like, this is my body and it's amazing and there's no, this is my body and I feel negative about it. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of in this middle zone where I just go, this is my body and it's actually the least interesting thing about me. There's so many more things we can talk about besides the way that I look and I have so much more to offer. I feel like that's the world we live in though, like sadly, is like everyone is so focused on like their own body and their appearance as well as other people's bodies. Like mm -hmm. There is so much commentary on the way people's bodies look, which is so fucked up when you think about it. Yeah, absolutely. People just commenting on other people's body size. Yeah, but I got to this point where I was like, you know, this is where kind of the fat and fabulous like thing started for me because obviously now I live my life every day being really happy with who I am and how fabulous I look and all the rest of that, no matter what size I am. And back in 2019, I didn't think I could be fat and fabulous. No, you can be fat and fabulous as well. And you can be happy. And since I like threw away all those like thoughts that I was having, I've just genuinely been so happy, especially in the last like two years. Cause I feel like every day I love myself more and more and more and not mm -hmm. in like a conceited way, but just <laughs> in like a self-love way. But it's also crazy because this has been something my whole life, Brittany, like yep. since I was a kid, my first like eating disorder was in year five. Wow. I worked it out like a few months ago. I was in year five, which like you're 10 or 11 years old. And I would mm -hmm. go to school and I would throw my entire lunchbox in the bin and not eat all day. And like, what the heck mm -hmm. at like 10? Like to yeah. me now as an adult, like looking back at that, I go, that is insane. Like, why did I feel like that? And I don't know why I felt like that. I feel like we're introduced to diet culture from such a young age, which can be so scarring and you maybe don't even realize it then. Like my earliest memory 
of diets Mm -hmm. would have been when I was under five. Shout out to Shaz again. (laughs) (laughs) I'm really throwing her under the bus here. My earliest memory is Shaz taking me and my little sister to the Jenny Craig Clinic because this was back before the internet. So you would go to like the Jenny Craig office or whatever it was in your local area and I thought it was the most exciting thing in the world that we got to go to this Jenny Craig place (laughs) and they had like massive freezer rooms and fridge rooms and that's where you would go and get all your meals and then you would like get weighed by the Jenny Craig That's consultant, right. my and mom I would did this too. I would go with my mum, and I thought it was like this big fun, mm. you know, Jenny Craig. Like, mm. but I was actually being introduced to some form of diet culture at five or under. Yeah, and it's just it's crazy. Yeah, I remember one time I did our like local community hall on the central coast had like a weight loss. I don't know, pro, not program, but it was like a group of people who like wanted to lose weight. So we all got together and there was a cash prize for the person who lost the most weight. Like oh, how ridiculous is that? I, I came second and I got a cash prize for coming second. What, how much money did you get? I don't know. I can't remember, but I think we all had to put in $50 to like be a part of it. And then out of that money. The so I think the it. first person got 500, maybe I got 250, but we went every week and checked in and set, stood up like Alcoholics Anonymous and said, Hello, I lost 1.5 kilos this week. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling bad. Like, it's just mental to me that that was like my life now that I. I feel like it's like push and pull. Like, it's good to see communities getting together and people encouraging each other. But then, like, is it in the long term a positive thing? Yeah. Anyway, we should probably get on with this episode. But I mean, for anyone out there who maybe some of this is resonating with you or maybe you're on your own little journey of self-love. Like, I think the proof's in the pudding for both of us. I know especially me, but, like, I'm sure you as well, that (sighs) I'm going to get emotional over here, Chase. I don't really know, like, how to put my thoughts into words, but I just really wish that everyone could have a piece of my brain and I could share how I feel about myself now because for so much of my life... I was so worried if I looked a certain way, I would be a lot happier. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I actually got rid of that thought and ideology Mm -hmm. that I truly experienced true happiness. And I feel like I literally lived my best life every single day because I actually don't worry about the way that I look. Exactly. And I think it's a um, personal journey for everyone and it's about finding what works for you. Mm -hmm. I definitely think life is all about like balance and like not restricting yourself. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like if someone is doing keto and they can sustain that and they love it and it works for them, like I'm all for that as Mm -hmm. well. But I think like no one's journey is the same and not one diet or way of eating is going to work the same for every single person. No. And there's a lot more to it than just what you're eating. Like, as you know, like, it's all about what's in your mind and the way that you feel about yourself. Absolutely. Anyway, let's pump this shit back up, dolls. Let's (laughs) get the good vibes going again and say we love all our scrollers so much and you're all beautiful in your own way. Let's get on to our royal flush of the week. Yes. For anyone that's new here, what is our royal flush, Matt? Royal flush is the best thing we've seen on the internet because, of course, a royal flush in poker is an unbeatable hand. So it's like the best hand you can get. So this is like a royal flush for us here at High Scrollers. It could be a funny video. It could be a TikTok trend, a new song or a new show we're streaming. What's yours this week, Brittany? So I've learned something this week from the internet and Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is something that I should have known. And I'm going to tell it to you and I hope that you don't know what it is either, but I feel like it's one of those things that I definitely should have known this at the age of 30. Okay. Ooh. (laughs) (laughs) We've got to start cutting out our, like, the thing is I drink so much water here that my (laughs) stomach just can't deal with it. So I've got to keep the vocals lubricated. We need to start cutting out the... uh, the noises because it's just (laughs) ASMR podcast. It's just going to be an every week thing now. Sorry, continue. Prunes. Prunes, yeah. (laughs) If you're going to say they're just dates. They are plums. Oh, even I was wrong. Did you know that? Prunes are plums. Did you know that a prune is a dried plum? I thought a prune might have been like in the date family or something or like a big sultana, you know. I thought prunes were just a thing of their own. Like I I didn't even make a correlation that it could have been 
something else. I thought it was just this thing of its own. I first of all have to say I love that this is the most exciting thing you've hey, seen all week. I wrote it down and I had to know. And I want to know to everyone listening, did you know that a prune is a dried plum? Because I love plums, but okay. I don't like prunes at all. So you know how like you've got an apricot and then you dry the apricot down and you've got those little dried apricot pieces. Yep. That's the same thing. Pr- well, a prune I hope so. Is- I just read it on the internet, so I don't know <laughs> it if It might I not can- even be true. <laughs> I'm just out here lying for the podcast. We'll look it up. We'll look it up. Is a prune a dried plum? Okay. Let's look it We're up. We're Googling. Go Google, girl. Because you know how, like, pickles are just cucumbers? Yes, I yeah. knew that. Yes. Prunes are plums that have been ho- dehydrated for preservation purposes. I had no clue. I love plums. That is just, but no, I refuse to believe it. It's giving giant cranberry, giant sultana. Can't have those on keto. (laughs) Yeah, we wouldn't have been having those. Maybe put some sour cream on top and you'd be right. (laughs) Yeah, just wrap it in bacon, you know. Oh, yeah. You'll be good. (laughs) Well, there you go. That's my learning of the week. (laughs) Okay. There you go. If you've ever wanted an insight into what excites Brittany, apparently it's (laughs) dehydrated plums. Well, my Royal Flush is a quick one this week as well. I do have maybe a little story time I can tell to attach to this, but... I have seen this week that a widespread bed bug outbreak is taking over Paris during Fashion Week. So obviously it's Fashion Week right now in Paris. All the celebs have flown in. Everybody's there to see the fashion. And there's been a bed bug outbreak throughout Paris. So when you see these fancy celebs sit in front row, like Anna Wintour has bed bugs. You heard it here first. <laughs> Allegedly, 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 all these celebs at Fashion Week and all the models walking on the catwalk. like They have bed bugs. Well, now that I look at the videos on TikTok and stuff that are coming up in my For You page, I just think to myself, bed bugs. Yeah, <laughs> You've right. all got bed bugs. Well, speaking of hotels, I stayed at a hotel last night mm-hmm. and when I got there and I unlocked the door... Have you seen the people on TikTok that do security videos about all the shit that you should do when you go to a hotel? And here I am. I never do a single thing. I just walk in there. But there's people online that have TikTok accounts dedicated to showing all the safety measures you should take when you go into a hotel, which one of them is included checking the bed for bed bugs, Mm -hmm. which I've never done. Have you? No, never. (laughs) And all the, but they bring devices to like put on the door so it's locked. Yeah. And then I was freaking out last night because the room that I was in um, had a door that went into the other room and that scared I me. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. Me too because what if they just open it? And then I had to check that it was definitely locked. But what if they heard me trying to open it? <laughs> That's awkward as well. <laughs> There's so much to think about in I a know. hotel room, isn't there? They're God, really... your brain's been in overtime this week. I know. Prunes. Prunes. Hotels. Bed bugs. But I think those videos of like people showing security stuff, like yeah. you'll find that then they say like at the end of the video, if you want any of this stuff, it's all linked in my Amazon storefront, right, so which obviously they, they earn a commission from. So I'm like, do you even do all those security things or are you just showing us 10 security things in the hopes that people buy at least one of them? Well, have you also seen the people on TikTok with hotels that do clean. a full clean? Yes! And they freaking bring their Domestos and their fucking toilet scrubber and they go in and do a full professional clean. Yeah. Which I do get though because, like, obviously they get cleaned, Mm -hmm. but shit can be dirty. Well, that's one thing I always think about is are these sheets new sheets? I'm never convinced. I'm never convinced. I used to work at a hotel and we went through a lot of sheets. Oh, did you change every bed sheet every time? I didn't clean the rooms. I worked in the restaurant in the hotel, but like, the housekeeping team, they are bloody busy. Yeah. And there's a whole, like, laundry, like, in every hotel. Yeah. Or they might get them done externally. But, yeah, I would assume that all sheets are fresh. I think it's also different, like, here in Australia maybe, but, like, I feel like in America I've seen videos online as well of people being, like, pulling back the sheets and it's dirty or getting mm. the blue light out and there's stains on the bed and things yeah. like that. Yeah, I think the thing that I get the most sus about is – the decorative pillows and the lounges and stuff because obviously True. They, they never, never get cleaned. And yeah. any time I've gone to a hotel with AJ and he flops on the bed and his head is on that decorative <laughs> pillow with the pillowcase that's never been changed, I'm like, get that off Yeah, because that would be filthy. Yeah, And the sofas and, like, the lounge, like, imagine the stuff people have done on that. Yeah. No, not, <laughs> not happening. Have you ever had bed bugs? 
I wouldn't know. Oh, really? No, you'd know. I've had bed bugs. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, Well, yeah. I've never really looked. And I picture them to be like nits. Yeah, they are. P- oh, okay. Pretty much like little like gnats or little tiny yeah. fly sort of things. In saying that, I did always used to get nits when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Um, I got it a few times, but my mum was like, so onto it. Like oh, she yeah. was like putting the eucalyptus oil in my hair Going or to school whatever with the that orange was. stuff in your hair. Yeah, she was doing treatments every fortnight. You know what? I got um nits when I was 21. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. That's not real. And how? I have no idea how. Oh god. One day my head was just really itchy. <laughs> And it was itchy in a way that took me back to primary school. Like, you know that curling, itching yeah. feeling? You're going to get that feeling in your head now because I'm talking about it. You know when you yeah. think about nits and you're like, I've got nits. <laughs> That's what you're going to feel right now. My head was really itchy. I was like, this feels like nits. Oh, I feel like I'm scratchy now. Yeah. I literally went to my bathroom mirror, parted my hair in the middle, and I could see them. And I was so mortified. Like, oh. I wasn't living at home. Like, usually you're living at home. You get your mum to sit there with the knit comb and get them out. What did you have to I do? Get to AJ to, the, to do it? No, this was before AJ. Oh, this yeah. was 21. True, true, true. Um, I went to the chemist to get, like, all the knit stuff. And then I got, like, I don't know, the comb and the knit shit and then I went to the counter and the girl working was a girl I went to school with. Oh no. And then I just played it off like I had to play it <laughs> off but it wasn't for me. I was so embarrassed but I literally got nits as an adult so. That is horrifying. I know I wouldn't recommend but I figured out a good way to get rid of them. Part your hair in the mirror and crack all the eggs with um, tweezers. Okay. So uh, to anyone out there, if you ever get nits, that's a good way to get rid of them. Because my mum used to pick them out and like snap them in her nails. Yuck. Okay, we got to move on from this because <laughs> I'm feeling queasy. I'm feeling queasy. Your head's crawling. Yeah, but I, I had bed bugs when I went to America and I... How did you know? Did you get like a rash? Yeah. R- woke up itchy, rash, all the rest of it. I'm like, what's going on? It wasn't until we stayed in an Airbnb and it was really dirty. The floor was real dusty and gross. Yeah, right. And then mm. eventually we checked our beds and they're just like in the cracks. The, yeah, of they, it the just bed. looked like little pieces of dirt. And then when we looked closer, it was actually like Where little bugs. Where the fuck do bed bugs come from? I've got no idea. But Where the do fun- they come from? The funniest part is I went to Disneyland with bed bugs. I'm on Splash Mountain thinking <laughs> there's bloody bed bugs all over me. They're probably swimming in the Splash Mountain water. Going down with you. <laughs> in the photo. I'll buy that one. You and the bed bugs. <laughs> So I know a couple of episodes ago we weren't allowed to talk about TikTok, but do I have your permission now? <laughs> yeah, we're back on, Joel. It's fine. Oh, and how's your account going? Um, Still got the strike? Well, after that I tried uploading a couple of videos, 200 views, but, <gasps> you know, so really like they TikTok themselves have told me that they don't shadow ban. That that's yeah, not I've a heard thing. that it's not a thing, but everyone says but, it is. I mean, how did I go from getting my videos before that, 100,000, 70,000, 200,000, and then... 200. 200 views. Like, doesn't add up to me. Kicking but you while you're down. Sure, sure, sure. Whatever. But I don't know. Still got the strike. Still everything's not working. <laughs> but we're just riding the way, You're still babe. out here being a criminal. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Well, anyway, I have a new account that I'm following on TikTok that mm-hmm. I really am enjoying mm-hmm. seeing. Um, and I don't know if you've seen her account, but um, she's an Aussie and her name is Jules, but her account is Recovering Party Girl. Mm. And I'm enjoying seeing her because she's documenting her sobriety on TikTok, which I feel like is something that we don't really see on the internet that much. Like I feel like we're very much living in a world of everything being a party and, you know, people having parties and then creating so much content out of it, whether it's like a a challenge, a trend. Hi, my name is Brittany and this is my first drink. Hi, my name is Brittany this is my 15th drink. Yes. Um, There's so many like trends that come out of parties as well as the ones like the all the costumes. I love watching the costumes yes. ones. Where Everyone are lining like, up showing their hey, thing. I, I'm Brittany and I'm dressed as Mario and blah, blah, blah. Have you I, seen the parties and it's like you both dress as something that rhymes? Yes. I love, love that. that. Yeah. Love that. People get so creative with that. I uh, feel like my parties were never creative. Like people, there was one party I had that was really creative, but like I just felt in Australia like, I don't know, maybe it was just my group of friends. <laughs> no one gave it their all. You know what I mean? <laughs> maybe we need to have more parties. Mm, nah, can't. <laughs> Can't be doing that. Anyway. Anyway, recovering party girl on TikTok. Do you know her? Yes, I know Jules. Um, first of all, 
people might know her from Big Brother last year. She was on last year's Big Brother season, but I actually used to work with her on my uh, uh, my old podcast. You um, nearly said other podcasts. I know. I almost said <laughs> other. There's no other podcast. Don't worry. <laughs> the old podcast. Um, yeah, she was one of my producers. So oh, small bloody world. Yeah. So I, I love Big her. Brother. She's a great time. She's very fun. She, she did was, Big Brother. Yeah. She was on Big Brother. Oh, yeah. I didn't watch it last year. You want to know a fun fact though? Yeah. Back in the day, yeah, I really, really like this was in the old Big Brother times, like not the new format, mm-hmm. but back in the old days, old days, I auditioned to be on Big Brother. Yeah, I, I know this, but you should tell the story for everyone else. But I've already heard this a million well, times. There's not really a story. Oh, okay. Well, congratulations on auditioning. I didn't. Clearly, get it in. didn't go very well. I was so sad. <laughs> Yeah, I applied online, did the online form, and then on the day was too nervous to go to the actual auditions. Because, you know, my friends in high school used to say to me, you either need to be on Big Brother or start a YouTube channel, and Mm -hmm. I chose starting a YouTube channel. Well, I tried. I would have been 21. Like, no wonder I didn't get in. Did you have nits? (laughs) (laughs) You know what? Probably. I probably had nits and I could see them jumping out of my head. that's why you didn't get it. Me and my nits. (laughs) But, no, it was really interesting. So you did the online application and then you went in, um, got your number and whatever, went in in a group, sat down, and then I was like, in my mind, I'm going to be really outspoken and like ballsy. Yeah. Um, and then we were in there like a group of 10 or whatever, and then we – it was pretty confronting. Like you had to say the person in the room that you liked the least and why <gasps> or who is the biggest threat or something. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of And, and then there was this one girl there, God bless her, but – I felt like she was just trying too hard <laughs> and like trying to be, I don't know. But I said, I pointed her out and I said, You are trying too hard. I oh said that. Because I wanted, wanted that. I did. And I was just like, I'm going to be ballsy and call someone out to show them that I'm not afraid of a yeah. bit of conflict. Yeah. And then, like, it, it all happened in the flash. Like, you were in and then they're like, You, 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 over there, you go. And then I just went, walked away and I was really sad. I didn't get it. <gasps> Because I always like to get what I want. Yeah, exactly. So, and now you've just called out this poor girl and you didn't I even get anything know. out of it. I <laughs> wonder what she's doing now. But, yeah, this was like 10 years ago. But I didn't know that Jules yeah. was on Big Brother. Yeah. So, anyway, recovering party girl, a.k.a. Jules. I wonder if she's going to listen to this episode. Probably not. But hello if you are listening. She's documenting her sobriety journey on TikTok, which mm-hmm. is just, as I said before, super interesting to see. Because you never see stuff like that on social media. It is all fun and partying on social media. And it's been really interesting and refreshing to see her going through the journey. And she's sharing her ups and downs. Like she's not this person out there saying, this is the best thing I've ever done. And it's amazing. Like she's documenting some days going, this is fucking hard. And like, I feel really boring or, you know, and it's just been really interesting to see. And I guess me being 30 now, it's got me reflecting on my party days Mm -hmm. um, and like, Comparing my early 20s and even my late teens, like, I would go clubbing like three times a week. Yeah. There were some weeks, even as recent as 2018, I was out five nights a week. It's Because that was just my lifestyle. I was a drag queen at the time. Yeah. So I was always out doing drag or just on Oxford Street. And yeah, five nights a week, I'd be like, hey, let's have three Long Island iced teas and get absolutely oh sideways. <laughs> Not the Long Islands. <laughs> like 10 bucks at, at Stonewall or something. And that's what we do. We'd all go out, have about three of them over the span of a few hours. And it'd just it's annihilate crazy. us. I feel like in Australia, we have such a party and drinking culture. Mm. And I feel like every social thing that we do, it's all like surrounded by drinking and partying. Mm-hmm. And I remember... Obviously, when I was a teen, like I used to be out clubbing, like every Friday and Saturday night, I'd go to King Street, which is this nightclub in Newcastle, like one of the which only- Which we've been to before, we together. Have. We're going to have to share that story with what happened. Oh. Um, but I would go there every Friday and Saturday night wearing the same Supre slip skirt as the <laughs> night before with a peplum top over the top <laughs> and my chunky platform heels, yeah. maybe- Inspired by Jeffrey Campbell heels. I can, I can so picture you wearing that. And it's so embarrassing to think of because then you get to know the security guards because you go there so often. Then you go on Friday night and then you're Saturday night and again. And then they let like, you hey! cut, cut the line, come yeah. through, come through. Oh, cringe. And I remember as I got a little bit older, like into my 20s, and I could sense myself partying less, like mm. going out less. And I remember back then I was sad about it. Like, oh, no, like I don't want to let go of my partying days and whatever. And now, being 30, I always say to AJ, like, I'm actually so glad that 
I'm done with my partying days. I'll still go out every now and then. I went out on the weekend and I was actually the last one there. Like me and AJ were the last one there. Usually I'm the first one to call it a night and go, nah, it's 10 o'clock, I'm out of here. Really? I was out. Well, it was the daylight savings weekend. So I was out oh, until yeah, two, yeah. but it was then three. Oh, okay, skip forward. Yeah. <laughs> so I was out real late. Um, but yeah, just got me watching her account has just gotten me thinking about drinking culture and I can really appreciate, you know, what she's doing Yeah. because yeah, it, this gr- drinking culture that we have is really in- engraved into, ingrained into us, engraved, yeah. engraved. engraved on your arm drinking <laughs> culture. You um, must drink. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many days Jules has been sober for? I think she's up to a hundred and something. I don't know if it's like 180. Oh, I'm not far behind her. I'm yeah. on my own little sobriety how, journey. How long has I'm it at like 165 you? days now. Wow. Yeah, but it is my birthday month, as I said, so I will be breaking that streak oh, very soon. You got that. I'm excited to have some cocktails. Just with my year of health, you know, which I might talk about a little bit later, give you a wrap up at the end of the year if you don't know about my year of health. But I've been on this health journey, which has um, been about, you know, achieving goals that are based on just feeling healthier. So drinking mm-hmm. more water, having more veggies, ordering less takeaway food. And one of them is cutting down on alcohol. I just felt like when I was going to events and stuff, like influencer events or even just parties and whatnot, Mm -hmm. you know, I was having like eight to 10 drinks when Mm -hmm. really I should be having one to two or none. And so I cut down to one to two and that was going well. Then when I was in South Africa, I was having lots of alcohol because it was so cheap. I was like, let's go crazy. Yeah, right. And so when I got back, I was like, I think I just like need a rest. And I decided "Hmm, we'll just stop the alcohol altogether, see how that goes. And I honestly did not think I would like last this long. Yeah, wow. Um, But yeah, it's been 165 days and probably only going to be a couple more until I have a cocktail gel. Watching Jules, it's kind of inspirational in a way. Mm. and like It's been pretty easy if you want to give it a go. Yeah. Um, but I think the only thing I struggle with that's kind of shocked me is how when I turn down a drink or say, I'll just have a water, just it's almost like the demeanour or the look on people's face mm-hmm. kind of goes, I'm confused. That doesn't make sense in my brain. Um, but apart from that... I'm thriving. <laughs> Love that for you. Yeah, I want to tell that story about King Street. You had a night that you put out to your, like, audience on YouTube. And was you, that that? Yeah. I feel like that was a separate night. No, I think it was the same night oh. because I remember being at King Street with – anyway, the yeah. point is Brittany did a YouTube video saying, hey, like, I just want to hang out with you all. So if you're in Newcastle, if you live in Newcastle or you want to travel to Newcastle, come and have a drink with us. We're going to be at, like, Honeysuckle Hotel is where yes. I think we started. Yeah. And, you know, you were like, Matt's going to be there. A few of my other friends are going to be there. Mm-hmm. And just come and have a drink with us and, you know, have and a nice when night. when was this? This would have been when we were 22. Oh, this was 2016. Like, I, I think I was 21 or 22. I had nits and two. <laughs> Fuck. Nits and honeysuckle hotel. <laughs> Bloody hell. And for context, King Street is this nightclub in Newcastle. Yeah. It's three stories. It's a different theme on every level and it's just your typical nightclub, yeah. like sticky floors and it stinks. So we ended up there. Yeah. And they had a karaoke room. And also you were vlogging the entire night. Yeah, so night. this was when I was, like, in my YouTube, like, living my best YouTube life. And this was before, like, all the TikTok trends that you would do on a night out. Yeah. So we were the w- one group of weirdos with a vlog camera. Yes. Like, drunkenly vlogging, going, yeah. hey, we're here <laughs> in the karaoke room singing. But we'd vlogged our entire night. We and, did, from and like the getting beginning, ready, getting ready at my house. Walking to and from the bar to the club and everything yep. like that. So, and drunk as well. So we've filmed all this footage. We're in the karaoke room singing ridiculously. We've got the vlog camera. And then the next morning we wake up and we're like, let's check the vlog footage. Yep. We lost the camera <laughs> on the night out back in 2016 or whenever this was. And then we were simply mortified yeah. at the fact that someone was going to find that. <laughs> Keep in mind, this is back before TikTok. This is when Instagram was just up and coming. Yeah. So someone would have found this digital camera and gone through the footage and it was us acting like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it, unedited too. It's I not know. even like It's not even like it was like, you know, what you see on YouTube. It's got all the awkward bits in between where oh, we have to say the same thing again and repeat someone ourselves. Someone found it and I remember like... I was mortified that someone was going to find that and see all that footage. How embarrassing. And that person is still out there today. Yeah, we never got that camera back. We never knew anything. You know, I lost two vlog cameras. I lost one at Coachella as well. Oh, that's <laughs> kind of iconic though. That's a bit, that's but again, a bit nicer. I filmed my whole trip. I was having too yeah. much fun. 
Lost it. Memory's gone. Yeah. No, that's tragic. You know, I met um, AJ at King Street Hotel as well. Really? A lot of great things have happened at that night, Yeah. Club. That's where we met for the very first time. And you want to know something funny? I think, I don't know what year it was that AJ and I met, but we met at King Street. We didn't know each other. Mm-hmm. Like we actually just met for the first time and introduced ourselves. And for some reason on that night back then, we took a selfie together. That is so random. With no- He was a big fan. (laughs) No, he had no idea who I was, which was good because this was back in the YouTube days, Mm -hmm. whatever. Um, We took a selfie that night with no context at all, like not to post anywhere or anything. I don't even remember taking a selfie, to be honest. Anyway, then we we just like must have added each other on Facebook or whatever, but we didn't end up dating until like a year or more after that. But how funny that we took a selfie the night that we met. It's like it was meant to be. Like it was fate. It, yeah. Well, do you want to know? You want to talk about fate? Yeah. When I met Sky, it was in a nightclub in uh, Sydney, which is probably the equivalent of King Street, but for the queers. And it's Arc Sydney. Right. Um, very iconic. And I first saw Sky at a drag show, which is just the most me thing ever. Mm-hmm. I was there with my best friend and we sat down and it was one of our first nights going to like a Thursday night drag show. And I saw Sky across the room and... I like bumped my best friend and I was like, oi, look at that guy over there. I was like, he is so my type. And I was like, that's my future husband. Ooh. So talk about fate. Here you we are. You manifested that. Four and almost four and a half years later. And we're definitely getting married. I haven't asked yet, but he's got to say yes. Are you going to have a big wedding? So we've been talking about this recently, actually. Okay. So we obviously want like a really like big, fabulous wedding. And can you imagine it's going to be the production oh, of the season? It'll be over the top. It'll be, be like a musical. The, release the movie in cinemas, really. Like <laughs> you can all buy ticket scrollers and come along to the grand premiere. Um, because, yeah, I want this big thing. But as we talk about it, this is how we kind of talk about it together. Mm-hmm. We'll go, oh, we want this and this is the dress code and we want these flowers and we want this happening and blah, 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 blah. And this might be our song and blah, blah, blah. And then five minutes later, we're like, God, it would be easy if we just eloped though, wouldn't I know. it? And I feel like <laughs> that's more and more becoming the way people are doing things nowadays. Yeah. I and think if I was to marry AJ, that's exactly what we would do. Elope. Just because it's like about the two of us. Yeah. And Weddings are so expensive now. Tea. That's the So thing. expensive. Like, I think the average wedding is like over $50,000. Yeah. And to me, I'm a businesswoman. Yeah, so true. I could think of way better things to invest that 50 grand into. Yeah. Especially for just one day and it's not even a day. It's like an afternoon. Yeah, see. But either way, can you actually have a big wedding so I can come? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if I had a small wedding, you probably wouldn't make the cut. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Going back to Paris Fashion Week and the bed bugs. This has been a an episode of, you know, loop backs. Full what do you call circle. that? Where you go back to what we spoke about earlier. Well, on that topic, one thing that I have seen trending this week, and I'm not, not sure if you have, but mm-hmm. I've seen lots of articles about it, is Pamela Anderson. She has a- attended a lot of these Paris Fashion Week events, and she has actually gone to all of them makeup free. Really? Which is, I think, really powerful when we see celebrities doing something like this, especially someone like Pamela, who I think has been known for her entire career, is this really glam. Yeah. Bombshell. Bombshell. Oh, yeah. Jinx. Jinx. Under a roof. (laughs) (laughs) But it's funny that, like, what you when you just said Pamela Anderson, the first thing I thought of is we don't have to give context to who Pamela is, which imagine being that famous. I know. That we can say Pamela Anderson. And you know instantly who who that that is, is. what she looks like. And I instantly think, like, the the blonde hair, like her iconic eyebrows, the lips. Well, anyway, you can look it up for yourself, but there's a ton of images of her from all these different events and she's fully just Mm bare-faced and she looks amazing and I think it's just so powerful seeing someone of her status doing something like this. Like, I think it's so powerful. Mm. Um, Is it a statement or something? Like, is she trying to, like, you know, prove a point or something? No, so she said she had a makeup artist who was a dear friend of hers and unfortunately she tragically passed away. She's basically said ever since then it hasn't felt the same for her wearing makeup so she's taken on this new kind of natural oh that's so nice yeah I think it is really nice and I guess in a way she is making a statement but Mm. the statement goes well beyond it being her just saying to everyone I'm not wearing makeup because like there's actually a really nice message behind it that is nice um and I just feel like it's really refreshing 
to see. Like, obviously, this has a beautiful message behind it. But again, like, I feel like I'm always referencing this, but we do live in this very looks focused world. And to see someone like Pamela Anderson just come out and rock the bare face on these red carpets, I think is amazing. And it makes me think back to like when Alicia Keys like came out and said, like, I'm going to stop wearing so much makeup. And then she started doing all of her concerts and everything with no makeup. Wow. I've just seen a photo of Pamela Anderson Mm -hmm. with no makeup. And she honestly looks beautiful. Yeah. I'm like so, first of all, she's like aging so gracefully. Look at how youthful she looks. How old is Pamela Anderson? Go Google, girl. (laughs) She is 56 years old. Okay, so she's like, you know, only a year or two older than Kylie Minogue. So she actually, you know. Look at Kylie, looking fabulous. Sorry, bringing her up every episode. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, like she looks so happy. Yeah. And obviously like I don't have experience with this, but I feel like for the other generation, some of the older generations, Pamela Anderson was such an icon of Mm -hmm. their time that maybe she was almost like, I don't know, but I'm just hypothesizing here. Maybe she was like a Marilyn Monroe where it was like, that was the standard of beauty or like people would have wanted to look like Pamela Anderson. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And to see now Pamela Anderson with no man, makeup on like it's almost like liberating yes hopefully for those people who once looked up to her being this blonde bombshell I think she was definitely responsible for all of our mums plucking their eyebrows into oblivion (laughs) and a lot of them never came back from it like a lot of our mums and aunties still have the thin brows because they overplucked them to the shit yeah but yeah I think this is really great to see and how exhausting to really be a celebrity, always in the spotlight for your whole life and always feeling like you have to look this full glam. Like, I think it's really... And just the power in being like, I'm not going to... This is me. Yeah. I really like it. I feel this has been a really wholesome episode really in, has. in general. Like we've, we've had educational... We've... We spoke about, you know, like body image. Mm-hmm. We spoke about, you know, going makeup free. We spoke about, you know, sobriety journey. You know, we spoke about knits. We sp- <laughs> <laughs> we've spoken about it all today. We've really covered it all in this episode. Another episode done and dusted. I know. It's so sad to leave you. Yeah, but we'll be back next week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and every week after that, hopefully. What is crossed. this, episode seven? I don't know. Yeah, I think I so. I think it is. Um, every Tuesday we upload new episodes here. If you loved the pod, make sure you turn on notifications and, of course, subscribe, follow us, leave us a rating, five stars or nothing at all. <laughs> uh, and a review really helps us out a lot. Of course, we're only at episode seven. We're still getting started here. If you haven't left a review, it really helps out the podcast. So Genuinely. please do that for us. We love you forever, scrollers. Yes, and if you did enjoy today's episode, tell a friend to listen. Let's bring back the word of mouth. It's one of the oldest forms of marketing. And the best. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the best forms of marketing too. So tell a friend, tell a co-worker, tell your mum. We don't care. Shaz loves the podcast. We need to call her up one time still. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be a good opportunity at one we point will. where I'm going to give her a call. We're going to have her on the – right now, no. <laughs> and she, she, she'll be at work when we call, so we'll be interrupting her day. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you have listened this far into the episode. So, uh, as always, this is a legally binding contract yep. that you have to leave us a review yep. and tell a friend. Yeah. 100%. Oh, wait, Matt, before we go, yeah. we have to do our screen time because we forget some weeks or yes. we're not doing yes, it every yes, week. Yes. Okay? No, we're not doing it every week. We're just doing it whenever, whenever. we can be we, bothered. Whenever we remember. Because, of course, High Scrollers is for the people who aren't afraid of their screen time and, and take pride yeah. in scrolling, okay? So we're with you on that. So we're going to be an example. What's your screen time this week? Oh, I'm pretty happy with this. Okay. Eight hours and 25 minutes. Nice. What's yours? Wait a second. What? Something's gone wrong here. No. I don't know if anyone will be able to beat this screen time of lowest of the week. And scrollers, if you can beat my time of average screen time for the week, put it on your story and show me because I bet, like, I don't think anyone will be able to beat my score. <laughs> score? <laughs> but beat my screen time. It is so low. I what? mean, I can think I it's guess? low. Yeah, g- guess. Four hours and 26 minutes. Okay, you are a psycho. What? It's four hours and 35 minutes. Damn, I was close. You're just a few minutes off. But I think that is so low. It's because I've been so busy this week. Yeah. Or do you secretly have another phone that you're not telling me about? (laughs) No, I don't. I don't. But you know what? I still win because it's highest is the winner. Yeah, so true. So true. Well, whether it's uh, low or high. We don't judge. We don't judge and you don't have to be ashamed. 
you can follow us everywhere else. For me, just search Britney Saunders. And for me, search All Right Hey. Anyway, doll, better let you go. I think I've got nits. Mm-hmm.